Hi everybody, hope you're well. Today we'll take a look at a book titled Polish Verachet, the Time Drop Ostsen Amsterdam by Raymond Bauda, published by FW Books. Tijndorp Ostsen is a special neighborhood in North Amsterdam. The village was built a hundred years ago based on ideals that are still relevant. Good, affordable houses for those with low incomes. A green and intimate neighborhood with streets and squares where people can meet and strengthen the bonds among themselves. It was the first real garden village in Amsterdam where working-class families from the overcrowded old city found light, air and space, as well as decent accommodation. Shortly after the First World War, building began in Polferacht, the eighth polder that was drained during the construction of the North Sea Canal in 1872, on the north side of the IJ, right next to an extensive dredging depot. North Amsterdam was a suitable location for more than one reason. Building land was cheap, and it was precisely in these years that the Dutch shipbuilding company and the Dutch dock company established their wharves on the shores of the IJ. This meant new jobs, including for workers from outside the city, and it was practical to house these newcomers close to their work. In 1921, the first residents moved into the houses, and in 1924, in the middle of a grey desert of piped-up sludge, arose a village with 1,320 houses, 36 houses attached to shops, 9 stores and 4 residences for small business owners, a doctor's residence, a small library and 2 schools. Tindorp Ostsam was born. What led up to this? First of all, there was an increasingly acute housing shortage. The population of the capital had grown, but the housing supply had not grown along with it. In the old city center, tens of thousands lived in tenement slums and cellars. The city was bursting at the seams. When the First World War brought private housing construction to an almost complete standstill, the situation became truly disastrous. The housing law of 1901 had admittedly opened the door to government involvement already, but now everyone from the political left to the right was truly convinced that government action on the housing market was inevitable. Funding began to flow and the emergency housing law was passed specifically for the construction of temporary housing. In Amsterdam, it was the social democratic alderman Floor Vibot who managed to stretch the legal possibilities to their limit. Together with his brother-in-law, the passionate Eric Kepler, director of the Municipal Housing Service, he put his shoulder to the wheel. Amsterdam started to build, and in a big way. A virtue was made of necessity. In North Amsterdam, buildings were not allowed to be higher than two floors, and in addition, the Emergency Housing Act only provided money for the construction of single-family homes. Along with the low price of land, this offered the opportunity to build spacious neighborhoods with low-rise buildings and lots of greenery. In order to be eligible for a government grant, the houses officially had to be semi-permanent, lasting at most 20 years. The houses were light in construction and were not built on pile foundations, but on concrete slabs. Kepler and his allies cherished the ideal of a dignified home for every working-class family, with a practical layout and sufficient privacy and hygiene, surrounded by light and air. They took inspiration from Ebenezer Howard's ideas about Garden Cities, 1902. Tindorp Ostsam did not become a self-sufficient city, but community facilities such as schools, fire and police stations, a bathhouse, an infant clinic, a public reading room and a branch of our house were all included in the plans. The housing service kept everything firmly in its own hands. The architects Berend Buinha and Joe Mulder Jr., who both worked for the Municipal Housing Service, drew up the Urban Development Plan. Their design was aimed at creating mutual solidarity. Poetry of street, neighborhood or quarter contributed to the harmonious development of the community. 
it was believed. The spatial structure of the garden village is symmetrical in design, with wide main streets, narrower cross streets, short inner streets, the zoni plain in the center and several smaller squares around it. Gate houses were built on the various main axes. The small building blocks, open at the ends, allowed for a view of the courtiers so that the public and private spaces subtly blended into one another. Small public gardens and trees on the vacant street corners, rows of trees in a sophisticated rhythm on the squares. Along with the front yards with low hedges and fences, these would make uh, Tindorp Horstsam a green and intimate neighborhood. There was no money for frivolities. The architecture can safely be called sober. But it was carefully worked out, with small variations in the masonry, for example. The characteristic red and black tile roofs form an important element, as do the wooden gatehouses. The low housing blocks with strong horizontal lines have a rural feel. The housing in Tindorp Otsam was intended for eligible workers, the families of breadwinners with a permanent job in the factory or with the municipality. The government imposed strict conditions on income and family size. The rent was set at about one-sixth of the family's income and about one-seventh for large families. A higher income-to-rate ratio was out of the question. Those who earned enough to afford more expensive rent-controlled housing or a privately owned rental were not eligible. In this way, the central government kept an iron grip on Amsterdam by making annual subsidies dependent upon the correct allocation of rent-controlled housing on an individual level. Between 1934 and 1938, an elongated strip of 642 houses was added, the so-called Vega Burt, based on the urban design by Cornelis van Esteren. This expansion had already been taken into account in the original plan. This time, it was not municipal housing, but the property of the General Housing Association and the Roman Catholic Housing Association at Austin. There was greater variety in the types of housing, including housing for the elderly. The design closely matched the existing village, which the residents depended on for its facilities. Tindorp Otsam has existed for 100 years. In the past century, the city has spread towards the garden village. What once was a remote settlement in the polder has become a neighborhood within the ring road. Amsterdam north of the IJ has changed rapidly in recent years, and this is also noticeable in uh, Tindorp Odsam. History has left uh, Ari Kepler's ideal workers' village in the dust. For a city of factories and shipyards, Amsterdam has turned into a city of offices, a city that mainly offers work for people with a relatively high level of education. In the tight housing market, there isn't enough room for them in desirable neighborhoods like the city center or the pave. There is still space in North Amsterdam and the price per square meter is much lower. In recent years, young urbanites have moved into the neighborhood and bought houses that are unaffordable for long-time Tindopers and their children. Home ownership in Tindorp Odsam has risen to 35% over the past 15 years. This has come at the expense of rent-controlled housing, which now accounts for 60% of the housing supply, compared to 85% in 2005. The divide between renters and owners has become increasingly sharp. The book was designed by Hans Gremen and printed in the Netherlands by Vilko Art Books. Ask for it at your local bookstore. Thank you for joining me today and see you in the next video. Bye.